Broadcasting from London, Ontario, Canada to the rest of the world, it's Ask the Talk. Thank you very much for tuning into the latest episode of Ask the Top. As always, I greatly appreciate your ongoing support. In fact, John just tweeted me hours ago. He's from the UK, and he said that he is a devoted fan of this show and a fan of the WWE. So that means a lot. Keep tweeting me. Keep interacting with me. And keep tuning in on a bi-weekly basis, perhaps soon to be weekly basis. No spoilers. It's just food for thought. We have a lot to get to on the program today. My thoughts on the greatest Royal Rumble, your questions, there's about a dozen to get through, so plenty of them, keep sending them in, and predictions for WWE Backlash. For new episodes of the program, plenty of avenues to venture down. YouTube, subscribe to me on there, Chris Toplack, christoplack.com, the full archive is available on there, along with all of my previous UFC podcasts, uh, Talking Combat with Chris Toplack and Ultimate Fighting Weekly. TWM.news, a great supportive sponsor along with TheReactionRoom.com. If you want to get social, Ask the Top is my Facebook fan page, at Chris Toplock on Twitter, at Chris Toplock on Instagram, and also Google Plus, it's Chris Toplock. As always, I open the show sipping on a delicious craft beer, this time courtesy of Founders Brewery in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Solid gold, premium lager, finest hops and malts. They have been active since 1997. The key to their success is that it is brewed for us. That is their motto. They hit a turning point when they realize, why not brew beer that we're going to enjoy? And then the general public latched on to that. Since then, they are known as one of the best microbreweries in all of America. Quite a a selection to choose from as well. They have everything from raspberry beers to their all-day IPA to the solid gold to some pretty heavy stouts. So check them out if you're in the Grand Rapids area. Founders Brewery, very popular in America. Let's talk about WWE's greatest Royal Rumble. It aired last Friday. I had a very long day. It was about a 10-hour day, and I was anxious to check this program out. So I watched it. It was like, what was it, five hours long? We'll get to that in just a second. But I want to share with you my pros and cons and overall what I would rate it. So this seems like a very obvious pro. How about Titus O'Neil sliding into our hearts? I belly laughed numerous times. Couldn't help myself. That was actually one of the only spoilers I received. I, I turned off the notifications on my phone from the WWE app. But... I saw something along the lines of Titus O'Neil and Botchamania. So I had to check it out before I even watched the full show. Oh, it was awesome. It's the gift that keeps giving. How about Daniel Bryan's record-breaking performance? Nobody has lasted longer in a Royal Rumble than Daniel Bryan. I guess they're actually counting this Rumble with all the others in terms of stats. I don't agree with that, but that's fine. Seth Rollins versus The Miz versus Samoa Joe versus Finn Balor in a four-way ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Loved it. How about AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura? Mine is the finish. It was a double countout. But nonetheless, Nakamura works so well as a heel. The entire event was expertly produced. That goes without saying. Some of the best crew in the business. And Braun Strowman winning the 50-man Royal Rumble. I enjoyed that. It's his time to shine. Long overdue. Some of the cons. How about the Saudi Arabian government propaganda video? It was a little bit over the top. It was just like minutes long of highlighting the fact that now women can drive a motorized vehicle in 2018. Seems a little archaic. And it was just, you know, basically like this full TripAdvisor video as to why Saudi Arabia is so amazing. It's so inspirational. Why you need to go there and why we should support it. It was just a little bit much. I I thought it was a little ridiculous, but that's fine. I didn't hate it. It was just over the top. Nothing significant occurred. No title changes. Yes, Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy won the Raw Tag Team Championships, but no title changes, no big surprises. And it resembled a house show with all the glitz and glamour 
for WrestleMania event. There were 60,000 in attendance. And Jeff Hardy versus Jinder Mahal was very clunky. In fact, another botch that took place was Jinder clearly not even being hit. Jeff Hardy flew off the top turnbuckle, whisper in the wind. Mahal, late to react, not even close, just kind of fell over. Overall, I would give it a generous 6.5 out of 10. How would you rate WWE Greatest Royal Rumble? Would love to know your thoughts. Uh, tweet me, at Chris Top Black. How about some industry news and rumors? Sunday Night Heat, Ravens show. We'll be returning. This is according to WWENetworkNews.com. They're reporting that on May 8th, this weekend, Sunday Night Heat episodes are scheduled to premiere on uh, the WWE Network. So I guess technically that's next week. Ah, I got ahead of myself. It's expected, they're saying, that uh, the earliest episodes beginning in 1998 are going to be the ones that are released from the very get-go. Looking forward to this. All hail male, mayor, male, of course he's male, Mayor Kane, Glenn Jacobs, a.k.a. the Big Red Machine, the Big Red Monster, the man himself, Kane, was declared a winner of the Knox County primary for mayor. Yes. Falls in the footprints of, well, not very many, although Jesse Ventura was the governor of Minnesota, which is even a bigger step up, but perhaps baby steps. Kane, very smart, very articulate, knows politics very well. So congratulations going out to him. Razor thin. In fact, he only won by 17 votes. You see these presidential elections where they say, hey, it's razor thin. 50,000, 30,000, 17. Jeez. Why to Japan? According to PW Insider, Chris Jericho is expected to return to New Japan Pro Wrestling within the near future. He was said to be done, perhaps a swerve or a work, but he's rumored to be returning soon. It's a much more flexible schedule. I'm sure he enjoys it. It's a new challenge, too. I mean, he's accomplished everything that there is to accomplish in the WWE, so it's new territory over there. Highlights from the week. Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor for the Intercontinental Championship. An amazing match. Those two... Uh, you know, all credit going out to them. Make the Intercontinental Championship that workhorse championship it was when the likes of Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect, Randy Savage, so many others held it. So they're doing it a lot of justice. Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn, or Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, in their hometown crowd of Montreal. What a reaction, by the way. And Jinder Mahal versus Braun Strowman, Bobby Lashley, and Roman Reigns, the man who can get Get cheered anywhere. Enjoyed that match. How about Charlotte, Oscar, and Becky Lynch versus Carmella, Peyton Royce, and Billy Kay? NXT was a great episode, too. Really like how they played up that Candice LeRae was just out of her element due to the fact that Johnny Gargano, her husband in real life, was severely injured because of his old tag team partner, Tommaso. Ooh. So I thought, otherwise, it was a pretty good week. Let's get to your questions. I mentioned there are a ton to get to. I don't want to waste any more time. Chris Craig, via Twitter, devoted fan of the program. Why wasn't the big show at the Rumble? From what I understand, it was reported that he re-injured his back and just simply wasn't physically ready to compete. So that's really why. Not saying that's at... Do I have to? Surprise, that handle's available via Twitter. Do you think Baron Corbin, actually, I think this is actually on uh, Google+, Plus. do you think Baron Corbin will have a successful career on Raw? Well, it's been rumored that Vince McMahon views him as a star. So if that's in fact true, then he's going to have a very successful career on Raw. Second question. Do you think there will be a 3MB reunion because McIntyre, Mahal, and Slater are all on Raw? I don't see it happening. It's far-fetched. McIntyre is being positioned as a future main eventer. and Mahal has already dabbled in the world title pitcher. In fact, he was a world champion on SmackDown. With all the respect to Heath Slater, he's relegated to the lower card and viewed as a comedy act. So it could potentially damage their credibility if they pair them up together, especially because... 
they're really positioning McIntyre as the future, and rightfully so. He's amazing in so many ways. Bashara. At It's Bashara on Twitter. Thank you for tuning in and asking another question. With Braun Strowman winning in Saudi Arabia last week, do you feel he's due for a title run or not yet? Do you think he's the one to take down Brock Lesnar? Great question. He's long overdue for a world title run. But for whatever reason, I get this feeling in my gut that Vince feels Braun doesn't need the world championship in order to be over, much like the likes of Andre and so many other big men. That said, I feel he's really the only viable competitor on Raw to believably defeat Brock. Let's face it. If anybody else defeats Brock, you're probably happy. If Braun does it, you go, oh, of course, that makes sense. The problem, though, is if Brock Lesnar loses to Braun Strowman, who does Braun Strowman go up against? I mean, he is the giant on Raw. And he's a baby face. If he was a heel, it would kind of make sense. Unstoppable heel, the way that Brock Lesnar has been positioned. But I don't know how you book him. J.A.B. Productions via Google+. Plus. Will Bobby Lashley fight Lesnar at SummerSlam now? And will the deserving superstars like Dolph Ziggler and Apollo Crews ever get a gosh dang freaking push? Appreciate the fact that you censored yourself. I'm not doing it for you. And why is Strowman so overrated? I'll answer the first part. If they are working towards Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, the build has been non-existent and poor, quite frankly, because it hasn't happened. With his partnership with Drew McIntyre, I think Ziggler is in line for a push, perhaps even for the Intercontinental title. Makes sense. Paulo Cruz, I think he deserves a push as well. Very athletic, very talented. He doesn't have the character or the microphone abilities or the confidence there. Quite frankly, I think that he would actually have to leave Titus Worldwide because he's viewed too much as a comedy act. He's having a lot of fun, always smiling. I'd like to see him a little bit more serious and really develop that character or have you know, a full-fledged manager. He kind of plays second fiddle to Titus. I don't see it working. As for the Strowman is overrated note and the question there, please elaborate. Why do you feel, J.A.B. Productions, Strowman is overrated? I mean, he's certainly not AJ Styles in the ring or Paul Heyman on the microphone, but as a big man in the business, I mean, he has surpassed all early expectations. I fully admit, he surpassed mine. I had serious doubts about him. Blew by them. Mike Leochi via Facebook. Glad you're tuning in again and asking another question. Appreciate your support. If they indeed go with a Bailey versus Sasha feud, who should turn heel? Like the question. In my opinion, and this is from him, Bailey should turn heel as her character has gotten very stale. And a heel turn would help her. Hmm, I like where you're going here. I much prefer Sasha Banks as a heel, for the record. And her babyface persona, to me, is very stale. But given the fact that Bailey has essentially been dead on arrival when she, ama- when she arrived on the main roster side from basically that debut, a heel turn would be rather refreshing. Perhaps necessary at this point. Where else does she go? But at the same time, she appeals to the kids, sells a lot of merch, and as Stephanie McMahon says, it's all about putting smiles on the kids' faces. So... I don't know if they're going to do it. But Sasha eventually needs to turn heel. Inevitably, it's going to happen. Just a matter of when. Leo Rush, 896 via Google+, Plus, was Braun's tag team partner a nice comedy choice for entertainment or pure stupidity? Well, from a booking standpoint, I want to know who in the room pitched that. I really do. Uh, Let's go. Uh, let's go. Hey, you have a son. He loves wrestling. J- just do that. Because he was a son of one of the referees, Dominic. It was done, quite frankly, to appeal to a younger demographic. That's the kids. The belief would be, if it could happen to Dominic, it could happen to me. So, quite frankly, you probably have to ask a nine-year-old how they felt about that. And perhaps that would be the truest response imaginable. Because I'm a little jaded, right? I, I found it so far-fetched, unbelievable, and hokey. Perhaps the nine-year-old Chris Toplak would have said, that could have been me. It's kind of cool. But then again, the nine-year-old Chris Toplak would have said, pick Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels or someone else, right? Edward, via Facebook, another big supporter of the program. 
Very simple. Women's Tag Team Championship question mark. The main roster still lacks the depth in order to make this a reality. If both Raw and SmackDown added, say, a few more women each, I believe it's a very viable option. But right now, a little too premature. Mary Martell via Google Plus. Is Brock Lesnar going to continue to retain the title for the next few months? Here's an even better question. When will the board of directors ever listen to the fans online? SummerSlam is not until August, so if he were to lose the Universal Championship, it would have to be on one of the major four pay-per-views. So it could happen at SummerSlam. But if that's the case, he will definitely retain until August and likely beyond. So he will be the champion for the next couple of months, at the very least. The board of directors fully buy into Brock Lesnar's star power. And guess what? They don't pay attention to the fans online. They probably pay way more attention to merch sales and the reaction in the re, uh, arena. So when Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman show up, is there a reaction? Absolutely. There wasn't one at WrestleMania, perhaps due to fatigue or Roman Reigns being in the match or the fact that he has overstayed his welcome being Brock Lesnar. But yes, the board of directors fully buys into him. And they do not listen to the fans online. Joseph via Facebook. Why does everyone keep thinking CM Punk is going to come back to the WWE? What are the signs they are seeing? Very simple, wishful thinking. That's the sign. They want it to happen. There's no evidence that it actually will. They just want it to. CM Punk left the fans wanting more. It was like when Seinfeld went off air. It wasn't the greatest finale, but it left the fans wanting more. They had a fantastic season nine. But his return is highly unlikely. And let's ask yourself this honest question. Would you really want to see it? I loved CM Punk for years. I don't know if I want to see him back. I mean, he's already 39 years old and training to compete in the UFC. You think his mindset is, I think I'm going to make a WWE return, even though I've been there, done that, sold the t-shirt, Won numerous championships. He has nothing else to prove. He's driven by goals. He's different motivations. I doubt he's ever coming back. Mr. Gore, when it comes to horror punk or anything horror related, he's your guy via Twitter. Do you think there is any chance for Neville to return to WWE? And if so, will he be on 205 Live or the main roster? And would he do better on Raw or SmackDown? Like the question a lot. Big Neville fan. Especially as he grew to find his confidence in his character, most importantly, as a heel. His WWE return is becoming less and less realistic. I mean, he's been gone for, for what? Like nine months? Ten months? Has it been a year? It's been a while. That said, he deserves a main roster spot for everything he accomplished on 205 Live. For months on end, he carried the entire show on his shoulders when very few could ever think of that. He would do much better on SmackDown. It's the wrestler show. He's a wrestler. Predictions. WWE Backlash takes place this Sunday, May the 6th, from the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. It's dual branded. That means Raw and SmackDown wrestlers will be competing against each other. And this is the first time they've had a dual-branded show, like one that wasn't one of the major four in quite some time. It's actually the 14th Backlash event as well. And I was reading, it's actually the first since 2009 to be dual-branded. There are eight matches in total that have been formally announced. Let's go through my predictions. Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley, a.k.a. Team Freak, Take it on their best buddies, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. I think it's a pretty easy one here. Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley. In fact, if those two got together on a regular basis, that'd be one hell. A tandem, especially as tag team champions. Who would ever defeat them? Let's move on to the Intercontinental Championship. It's Raw's Seth Rollins taking on SmackDown's The Miz. The championship is not moving to another brand. Seth Rollins will retain a very entertaining match. For the Raw Women's Championship, it is the champion Nia Jax taking on Alexa 
bless. Even with outside interference, courtesy of Mickey James, it simply won't be enough for Alexa Bliss to get past Nia. Nia Jax is going to easily retain her Raw Women's Championship. Are you intrigued by this one? It's a big question. Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass. Maybe it's just me, but Big Cass forces me to miss Test. I'm not saying I never liked Test. In fact, I did. I'm just not really buying into Big Cass right now. I feel as though they're trying to elevate him a little too quickly. Daniel Bryan will overcome the odds yet again. My prediction is Daniel Bryan will force Big Cass to tap out to the yes lock. For the WWE United States Championship, it is the champion Jeff Hardy taking on Randy Orton. Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy had a fantastic match several Royal Rumbles ago. I think this was like 2011, if I do recall correctly. It was quite some time ago. And Jeff Hardy came oh so close, but he lost. I feel as though the tables will turn and he's going to retain his United States Championship. Moving along, it is Roman Reigns taking on Samoan Submission Machine, Samoa Joe. This is a tough one to predict. It's rumored that Samoa Joe will be going on to face the winner of AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. As for Roman Reigns, what's next for him? He's still in the hunt for that Universal Championship. I feel like Samoa Joe could take the pinfall and still move on. And of course, he has the credibility, the challenge for the WWE Championship. But I'm going to believe this is a twisted Samoa Joe. Yeah. He's going to beat Roman Reigns. What a storyline that would be. Similar to John Cena, Superman is a mere mortal. The WWE SmackDown Women's Championship, it is Carmella the champion defending it against Charlotte Flair, who she won it from after cashing in her Money in the Bank contract. I fully expect an appearance from Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, the iconic duo. They will greatly assist Carmella, and she will retain for SmackDown Women's Championship. And for the WWE Championship, hopefully headlining the show, it is the phenomenal one. AJ Styles versus the king of the low blow, Shinsuke Nakamura. What is his obsession with constantly low-blowing AJ Styles in the nuts? It's strange. But I love the mannerisms of Shinsuke Nakamura as a heel. You just want to hate him, and yet he's still kind of cool but he works as a villain. It definitely resonates with me. He's more interesting than he's ever been on the main roster as a heel. Many predicting that Shinsuke Nakamura will finally claim the WWE Championship. I believe AJ Styles retains. Samoa Joe will challenge him, and that's going to be one hell of a feud. In fact, I think Samoa Joe will be the one to take the championship from AJ Styles. And that will do it for yet another edition of Ask the Top. If you would be so kind... Like this, share this on social media, tell your friends, family, and fellow wrestling fans to tune in to new episodes of Ask the Top. I take one final swig of my solid gold premium lager courtesy of Founders, and I bid you farewell. Happy trails to you until we meet again.